countless symbols cover the stone tablet's surface, forging a riddle between several languages. You make out one ruined line. The champion must offer a burning stone to the dragon's mouth. You recall this stone to be the gem of the desert. Outside the empire, it is known as a mere fire rune. And such an offering must be placed in the dragon's mouth. You place the offering deep inside the dragon's mouth. Something in the dark seizes your wrist. The grip tightens to sheer agony. Cold metal presses against you to soothe the ache. When you reach for it, your fingers catch on a pair of greaves. As you pull the armor free, the bitterness of betrayal cuts through you. Ash clouds the room, hot as a forge. You stand high on a black cliff housing Zolstissa's temple. Other lizards scream, declaring you a blasphemer. I see you. And inside you is the strength I've been looking for. You must find the temple where the Devara's loyal servant was abandoned. I will draw strength from there to speak again. The vision fades. The cave sharp chill returns, and with it, a cold aura takes shape behind you. A lizard stares at you with open delight. His torn garb resembles that of a priest. I welcome you, honored one. Be at peace, for your day has come. Do not hesitate. The ritual is prepared for you at the proper place. My master awaits. The master of us all. We serve the devourer in his infinite grace and hunger. Join the master at the temple of the false goddess, Zolstissa. We cannot leave him waiting. The spirit keeps glancing back. A difficult task since his shoulders are tense as iron. How can I help? If I knew the way, Arch the Chronicler puts his head... The air is thick with heavy flakes of ash. The altar before you seems to radiate heat as you approach. An emblem of the sun glows faintly on the altar, but all you can hear is the hiss and rumble of the volcano and your own heavy breath.
The ancient temple of Zol Stissa crowns the cliff. Loathsome place. A fragment of memory. Followers of the false goddess betrayed you here. You preached the devourer's blessings. He would bring them to greatness. Searing pain. A stone hits your shoulder. A sharp crack. Another glances off your skull. Your world turns red. Ah, the fanatical soul. Hunted by Zolstissa's followers, he fled back to the outlaw empress with the devourer's words on his lips. Clouds of ash batter you and flames lap at your feet, but you stand strong. It's all a trick of the mind. What point is there in resisting the truth? When I speak, eternity answers. The Devourer's legacy is your fate. Turn away, and I will crumble you to ash. Now go to the greatest mortal city. The last two pieces of the armor rest there. One hides in an enclave of the lizards. The other is locked away by a man named Kem. Do not disappoint me. The vision fades, but your sense of unease does not. Something watches you, cold as death. The spirit keeps glancing back. A difficult... How can I help? A lizard spirit bows deep before you. May the devourer bless your endeavors, champion of the dragon. The spirit's tail flickers in unabashed delight. A champion is true power unshackled. I am here to serve said power as I served the first champion, the outlaw empress. Her legacy was recovering the devourer's sacred bones. Yours will be conquering the world clad in his armor. The spirits bound to each piece shall shepherd your ascension. Restore it by devouring our souls, and you will be unmatched. Only the weak fear such a glorious destiny. The champion surpasses all weakness, for they are blessed by the dragon. For years I was foolish. I served Zol Stissa, but she was a silent deceiver. Until I met the outlaw empress, I was lost. The empress saw I was truly faithful, but preaching a false prophet. She led me to the devourer, to the endless voice of the dragon. The devourer is true divinity. He always listens, always guides, and I was his chosen preacher, a voice to the masses. The Devourer doomed us, and the Empress reveled in cruelty. Silence! The outlaw Empress was the Devourer's first chosen, and you shall not defile her memory. Yet the enemies of the Devourer are many. When I spoke the truth, we were forced into hiding, awaiting his rebirth. The spirit keeps glancing. How can I help?
The troll leans in and glares at you with beady little eyes. His breath is like a butcher's offal bucket, left in the sun too long. No cave for you. The troll crosses his arms across his chest and shakes his head. I get sack of me every day to watch cave. Not answer questions about cave. Island keeps me strong, stronger than other trolls. Go now, or there will be pummeling. I tell you this already. I guard cave for sack of me. Every day, a new sack filled with tasty chunks. Human, elf, lizard, all is good. No care about other puny trolls. They are weak next to Krag. Nothing can defeat Krag. And no cave for you. Huh? Stop your mouth noises. No cave for you. No cave for you. I tell you this before. The troll stares at you in abject confusion for a long moment before. No cave for you. No cave for... The troll grimaces and spits a melon-sized glob of phlegm onto the ground near your feet. No cave for you. The troll looks over you thoughtfully while one of his fingers rummages around his nostril. Cave for you. Cave for you, but no cause trouble. The altar before you seems relatively bare. There is no inscription to a god and no offering placed. All you can see is a smear of blood on its surface and a hollow that seems to call for something. You feel an invisible hand grab you by the throat. Cold, unseen lips brush your ear. You can't make out any words, but you understand what you're hearing. Whispered tears, screams in the dark, blood, pain, blood, blood. The hand releases you, and you stagger back, gasping. The altar watches you silently. It's waiting. Please, go ahead. Now that the Master's dead, might as well pursue divinity, I say.
The spirit of a Magister Priestess kneels on the ground, her hands tied behind her back. She flinches as the ghostly sound of tortured screams from nearby catches your ear and hers. She steals a look upwards at the source of the screams, then looks away again with a shudder. Another ghostly scream intensifies, hitting a peak, then abruptly ends. Panic washes over the Magister's spectral features. She's next. You behold a face you've seen before, in blackened glass, soul sickness incarnate, the rotten flesh of the world's most shameful desires, an all-knowing affliction. This is the God King's pallid envoy walking the world as the Sallow Man. You feel him in your head, scrabbling for purchase amongst your thoughts, looking for a way in, his madness and his anger and his hate banging on the door of your mind. A cacophony assails you, a melee of clanging bells and scraping nails, mixed with laughter and insanity and pain. Then, the sallow man ejects you, and you realize you were never in his mind at all. He was in yours, with all his agonizing, caterwauling lunacy. He knows you want the secrets of the Council of Seven. He lets you know he has them, and that you will never take them from him. He gives you a long, cool look, while the torches crackle and nearby lava rumbles. And then, with a scratch across your mind, he asks you why you're here. She greets you with a steady gaze through bloodshot eyes. Looking closer, you realize the threads across her eyeballs are the darkest black. She stands there, implacable, her icy gaze upon you. Deep in her pupils, you fancy you can see a burning flame. He gives you a calm look. After a moment, you realize he doesn't blink. Lightning fast, he grabs your wrist, shakes his head, and still he has not blinked. You behold a face you've seen before as you feel him in your head, scrabbling for purchase amongst your thoughts, looking for a way in, his madness and his anger and his hate banging on the door of your mind, looking for the severed head of Alexander. A wall of disdain near knocks you reeling. The sallow man's contempt hits you like a tidal wave, and then it passes. A woolly fog envelops your mind, telling you to choose the winning side. Screaming, biting rage blazes across your mind, and a great roar emerges from his mouth, as if all the fury beneath the world was coming to burn the very earth, and in your mind, the roar becomes a word. 
Kill!
Glory is mine. He leers at you. You feel his hate, his rage, his blinding thirst for blood, your blood. He reaches into your mind and fails. He has no power now. The power is all yours. He howls in pain and hate and rage and tries to push you away, but he cannot. So he closes his eyes and summons everything. A raging torrent of memories washes through you, so fast you can barely see an image before it's gone. An elven child, the moon, the sun, the void, the dirt, the death in the fog amongst the trees. And at the last, part of the key to the mountain, Ralik, Vrogir, and Zor Stissa worshipping the sun.
cloying miasma within the glass shimmers and a face comes into view. A well-dressed dwarven woman peering closely at you. With a hiss, she closes the mirror and is gone. A sickly haze forms upon the glass, then shimmers and becomes a black ring brute, huge and ugly. On seeing you, he raises an eyebrow. You are not the sallow man. Never trusted wordless. Tell Sallow which shall be done. The God King gets what the God King wants. He raises a hand in salute and then vanishes as he folds the mirror away. You peer into the mirror and you see Sada, the memory of love amid satin. But then the image shifts and you see her in another place entirely. A city, a cathedral. It is the Cathedral of Arcs. You recognize it from paintings that hang in your palace. Sada is in the City of Arcs. You know where to go if you seek to find her. The bilious film reforms in the glass and becomes a knight in shining armor, sunshine glinting upon his helm, the light reflecting, masking his features. On seeing your face, he snaps the mirror shut.
You are the Salomon, a twisted undead elf, your memories flashing through you like sparks from a blazing fire through smoked air, passing so fast you can barely see an image before it's gone. An elven child, the moon, the sun, the void, the dirt, a death in the fog amongst the trees, the ugly hag in the desert alley whose sight you took, an artifact that powers a lever. You strain to hold on to that one last memory, and at last it comes. Tis and Elias, Duna, Xantetza, and Amalia, all worshipping the moon. The sallow blood within the meat was corrupted long before his death. It makes you sick, and then Sallow's memories are gone. Ice-cold water is suddenly thrown in your face, tearing you out of your stupor. The pain makes itself known again, swamping your senses. A pale, misshapen figure looms ahead of you, a glowing tip of red-hot iron in its hand. You hear yourself croak out a plea. Please, I don't know anymore. A guttural voice responds with a wheezing laugh. I know. The iron touches you, so hot that it feels cold. The sound of your own screams fill your ears, while the smell of burning flesh and hair fill your nostrils. You suddenly feel pain, blinding, burning pain. Your screams have been reduced to hoarse whimpers. You're too weak to struggle against your chains anymore. An ugly, staccato voice rises above your whimpers, barking a command to someone. Dispose! You hear a wondrous sound, that of a merciful blade slicing downward through the air. The pain ends, and darkness envelops you.
The unwholesome murk clears to reveal more unwholesome murk, as if the mirror is lying forgotten at the bottom of a well. How may I help you? That's a game. Junk. Like these came right from the traitor queen's court.
Holy Coyote. The Black Ring's operating from right inside Justinia's court. Their spy's been bending her ear, driving the strife. She ain't just working for her own gain, but for theirs. Shite. No idea. For all I know, she may not be in her right mind. Once the Black Ring's lies are swimming in your blood, you can't just squeeze them out. Isbel, our closest advisor, has got to be. All it took was a few magic tricks for her to make Justinia's eyes all wide and wandering. But it'll take more than a little hocus pocus to save Isbel once I wrap my hands round her stinking neck. Woken, such a pleasure. Did you miss me? Wait, don't answer that. Of course you did. My lord's given me another chance, such is his grace and wisdom. As for you, well, you're out of chances. How many have you had by now, I wonder? Two, three, a hundred? It must all be a blur for you. Open your eyes. War, slavery, disease, void, death, and the fall of a divine. Do you suppose these happy accidents? His work is all around you, and you can consider me. She peers at you through narrow eyes. Her next words do not pass her lips, yet pierce your ears as if she'd spoken them. His agent of death. He won't deny me his glory, his presence, his scent. Has he not simply told you by now? <laughs> Are you sure you're God woken? That head of yours is awfully empty for a wannabe divine. Shouldn't you be wise or something?
I'm afraid that exploring this island would only consume... on the warriors I have for hire, but you can't put a price on the glory they'll win you. 